Our gospel lesson today and the, the final lesson and the lesson for our sermon is from Mark chapter 7. We usually stand to read the gospel, but this is a really long lesson. And so you can stay seated, but listen to what Jesus says. He focuses our attention on our hearts. It says the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come to the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. He continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is korban, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it's what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. This is God's word. Dear friends in Jesus, fight the good fight, we just sang. Put on the full armor of God, we just heard. I think Christians are understanding those words more and more. The Christian life is a battle. All around us, we hear warnings about the dangers of our world, don't we? Warnings about what the government might do. Warnings about what schools teach. Warnings about messages and movies or TV. Watch out. Watch out for this. Watch out for that. And, and we need those warnings. Because it's so easy for us to get apathetic, to get complacent. It's so easy for us to get so used to sin and evil that we don't even notice it anymore. So I need those reminders. Put on the full armor of God. Life is a spiritual struggle against evil. And Jesus today adds one more warning to the list. Jesus wants to warn you about the most dangerous and the most sinful influence in your life. He wants to warn you about the person who is the most dangerous to you in your life. Do you know who it is? It's you. Do you realize that? It's so much easier to, to blame everybody else, right? But if you came here to church today ready to complain about everybody else in your life, then you're in the wrong place. If you in your life find satisfaction condemning all those evil people out there, then Jesus has an inconvenient truth for you today. In fact, Jesus is going to make you squirm in your seat a little bit. He says the greatest influence of evil in your life is you. 
Her lesson starts off innocently enough. We're told that the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from, the, from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw that some of his disciples were eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. If you're just hearing this for the first time, it, it almost makes you smile. Jesus' disciples were doing something that was terribly awful. Did you catch what it was? They were eating without washing their hands. It's like moms everywhere just gasp, right? How could they do that? Well, actually, in Jesus' day, this was a, a really big deal. To eat food without washing your hands was an incredibly big deal. Our lesson goes on to say that the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they return from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Washing stuff was a really big deal. And so when those Pharisees saw Jesus' disciples eating with unwashed hands, they were appalled. And they turned to Jesus and they said, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? You'd expect Jesus to, to go along, right? Expect him to turn to those disciples and say, come on, guys. Wash your hands before you eat. But Jesus didn't. Instead, Jesus got mad. He said to those Pharisees, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human traditions. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Those Pharisees with their nicely washed hands, according to Jesus, they were hypocrites. Because washing your hands isn't really the issue. Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Lip service. You heard that expression before? Lip service. God hates it. God hates it when people say nice things about him with their lips, but don't believe in him in their hearts. God hates it when people try to make themselves look good on the outside and hide whatever is on the inside. There's a word for that. Hypocrites. Hypocrites are people who say one thing and do another. And we need to be careful because church is always a great place for hypocrites. Because at church, we always make everything look nice. At church, we always smile, right? You know the kind thing to say. You know the words to use. And when someone asks you how you're doing, what's always the answer? Good. But what's really inside? What's really inside your heart? If church ever becomes a place where we go and we pretend, then we're not really a church. God hates lip service. And here's a sign that our hearts are in the wrong place. Jesus said to those Pharisees, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. It is always so easy to let go of God's commands and to have our own traditions instead. For example, all this hand-washing stuff. Do you know how many times in the Old Testament God told the Israelites to wash their hands? Zero. Like we talked about earlier, the Old Testament is filled with lots and lots of commands about all sorts of things, but there are zero commands about washing your hands before you eat. So can you see the problem? Those Pharisees, instead of focusing on God's word, they raised up their man-made traditions. And Jesus says, this is a big problem. It was such a problem, he gave another example. An example that we're not familiar with today. 
Jesus said, God commanded you, honor your father and mother. We just studied that in the commandments, right? Which one is it? Number four, the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. The Pharisees in Jesus' day had come up with something new. They said that if you gave a gift to God at the temple, that gift could take the place of caring for your parents. In other words, if you give a nice offering to God at the temple, then you're not responsible for caring for your father and mother anymore. Sound good? No. Jesus said, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you've handed down and you meant to do many other things like this. Why? Why do we come up with so many different traditions? Why do we set aside God's word to follow our traditions? Well, it's really pretty simple. It's because our traditions are always easier to follow than what God actually says in his word. Let's think about it. Which is easier, to wash your hands or to keep your heart pure? Wash your hands, right? Which is easier, to give a one-time offering to God at the temple or to honor your father and mother every day of your life? Giving an offering is way easier. So we come up with our own rules to get out from under God's rules. It's always easier to follow my laws than to follow God's laws. But Jesus wants nothing to do with that. He was talking to the Pharisees, but he decided to call the whole crowd to him. Everyone needed to hear this. He said, listen to me. Everyone, understand this. Nothing outside a person defiles them by going into them. Instead, what comes out is what defiles a person. This must be really important. He just wants us to understand it. What he's saying is this. What you eat doesn't make you sinful. What comes out of your heart makes you sinful. The clothes that you wear don't make you sinful. What comes out of your heart is what makes you sinful. Washing your hands or not washing your hands doesn't make you clean or dirty. It's what comes out of your heart that makes you clean or dirty. So Jesus says, watch out for you. And then he adds some words that we'd rather not hear Jesus say. He drives this point home as clear as it could possibly be. He says, what comes from inside is what defiles a person. For it's from within, out of a person's heart, that come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All of this evil comes from inside and defiles a person. Out of the heart, out of your heart. Out of my heart. I would have preferred Jesus just to say, you know, you guys are sinful. But he goes so much deeper than that. He lists 13 things. Did you hear them all? 13 things that come out of our hearts. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, Malice, deceit, envy, folly, arrogance, slander, all of those things. I just said 12, I forgot one of them. All of those things, it comes out of the heart, right? It comes from inside of us. We always want to make the excuse, oh, no, somebody else made me do it. And Jesus blows that excuse out of the water. No, it's, it's out of your heart. Don't believe Jesus? Think about this. No one has to teach you how to lie. No one has to teach you how to lust. No one has to teach you how to be angry or arrogant or steal or hate. 
Because all those things come to us by nature, right? From our sinful nature. Surely I was sinful from birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. You know, in, in the course of history, there have been Christians who have tried to get away from everybody else. There's been Christians who've tried to avoid all the evil of the world. Maybe you can think of like monks or nuns who lived in monasteries. If you go to a monastery, do you know what you still find there? Sin. Even if you were to separate yourself from every other person on the face of the earth, if you were to never see another person again, do you know what you would still do every day? Sin. Because it comes out of here. It comes out of your heart. There's a story that I like to tell that, that really drove home that point for me. Maybe I've told it to you before. I don't remember. I'm going to tell it to you again. About a decade ago, there was a famous Christian pastor who was exposed as being a fraud and a hypocrite. It just happens too often, right, in our world today. When I heard the news about this famous pastor, I was actually at a pastor's conference. And when the news was shared, I remember there was an old pastor there from Texas who, when he heard the news, he just shook his head and he said, the root of every sin is found in every human heart. I've never forgotten that. Because it's true, the root of every sin is found in every human heart. It's something for us to say, I could never commit adultery. You're right. Of course I could. It's easy for you to say, well, I would never steal. You're right. Of course you could. Because the root of every sin is found in every one of our hearts. We can wash our hands all day long. We can put a smile on our face and make ourselves look good on the outside. But the root of every sin is found in every human heart. It comes out of the heart. That is why King David prayed what he prayed so long ago. Create in me a pure heart. Oh God, what we need isn't just a little spiritual help from God to go on our way. What we need is a heart transplant. We need somebody to give us a whole new heart. But did you know that that's what Jesus came to do? One night Jesus talked with one of these Pharisees, a man named Nicodemus. And here's what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. According to Jesus, this problem with our hearts, it's so bad that we can't get into heaven unless we're born again. But Jesus tells us how a person is born again. He says, through water and the Spirit. What's he talking about? Baptism. He's talking about baptism. Do you know what the word Baptism means, it means washing. Actually, the word baptism is used two times in our lesson today. It's just you don't see it in our English translation. It says wash. In our lesson where it says that they practice the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles, the word that's used is baptism. When it says that they don't come back from the marketplace and eat without washing, the word used is baptism. To baptize means to wash, and in Jesus' day, people were baptizing everything. They were washing cups and pitchers and kettles in their hands over and over and over again. And Jesus said, right idea, but wrong thing. Baptizing your hands, washing your hands, doesn't really make you clean. But I have come to, to baptize your hearts. My blood is what purifies you from all of your sins. My resurrection is what gives you new life. This is how you and I get washed, get cleansed with baptism. The Bible says that baptism is not the removal of dirt from the body, but it's the pledge of a clear conscience before God. In the miracle of baptism, Jesus washes us. He takes away all of our sins with the blood that he shed on the cross. He, he cleanses us. If you have been baptized, that means that you're clean. I know you don't always feel that way. So often we feel dirty. 
Right? We feel guilty. But the Bible makes this promise. You are washed. You are justified. You are sanctified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Maybe your hands still get dirty. Maybe your clothes sometimes are dirty. But the Bible says, all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ in baptism. God washes us. He gives us that pure heart that we need. And this is what Jesus teaches us today. He teaches us that all along, I was worse than I thought. But all along, I was, I was more loved than I thought too. Because out of my heart comes all sorts of sin that I try to hide. But out of God's heart comes undeserved love. Comes grace. For you and me, when God's word leads you to say, create in me a pure heart, O God, Jesus says, I already have. And that changes you. Power of baptism, Jesus' salvation, it's meant to change you not on the outside, but from the inside out. Maybe starting with this. Christians live with humility. I think humility is a forgotten virtue in our world today. And yet Christians are called to be humble. How can we look down our noses at anybody else? How can we blame everybody else when we know that the biggest problem in our lives is, is me? The true knowledge of our sin, true repentance for our sin leads us to be humble. Jesus, sinners does receive. Out of my heart, sin. Out of God's heart, grace. God's grace leads us to be humble. But then God's grace also leads us to look around and to find people who are broken just like we are. Our world is full of people who are hurting. So many of us are hurting. And yet so often we try to hide it inside. We try to put on a good front. But that never gets rid of the brokenness in our hearts. Yet the Bible says that Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus came Bind up the brokenhearted. You don't have to pretend to be somebody that you're not. Jesus loves you. And when you know Jesus' love, that leads you to look around for other people who are broken, just like you are. And, and then it leads you to get your hands dirty caring for them. It's this ironic thing that the Pharisees had super clean hands, but they had dirty hearts. And Jesus tells you the opposite can be true for you. You can get your hands dirty. Caring for people in the brokenness of our world. You can have dirty hands, but know that your heart is cleansed by faith in Jesus. Get your, dirt, your hands dirty by caring for all those people who are hurting, who need to know how much Jesus loves them. And finally, you, you can know every day that you're at peace with God. You've been washed. No matter what happens in our world, in spite of all those dangers that are out there, no one can take away from you what Jesus has done for you. And I've always remembered a person who told me to think about my baptism twice every day. Have you heard this before? The person said, when you wake up in the morning, think of your baptism. And you can remember, I am a baptized child of God. I am a new creation. I'm going to live for Jesus today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That is our motivation for living every day. Remember, the person said to think of your baptism twice each day. He said that at nighttime, when you lie in your bed and you think back over the day and you, you can't avoid all the different sins that you commit, even though you're going to live for Jesus, you committed all these different sins. He said, think of your baptism. Remember, I am a baptized child of God. Jesus has already taken every single one of those sins away. We can live at peace with Jesus. We can sleep at peace with Jesus. It is true that out of our hearts comes things way worse than we want to think. But it's also true that out of God's heart, 
comes grace. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, just like those Pharisees whom you confronted, it's too easy for us to be hypocrites. It's too easy for us to to know how to say the right words, to know how to put the right expression on our faces, all the while while we hide the sin in our hearts. We're thankful, dear Jesus, that you receive sinners like us. You give us a washing, not like washing our hands with soap and water, but you wash our hearts through baptism with your blood. You give us the promise that you've taken away every one of our sins. You tell us that we don't have to pretend to be somebody that we're not because you love us. Out of your heart comes grace. We pray, dear Jesus, that your salvation, that the waters of baptism would lead us to be humble Christians. Pray that it would lead us to be Christians who look out for those who are broken and hurting and share with them your love. Pray that it would lead us to to be at peace with you every single day. We are your baptized children. We are clean, all by your grace. In your name we pray. Amen.